No, really, I read all of them. I can name anybody. Okay, we'll quiz you. Okay, go. Give him one. Jenny Sparks. Uh, Authority. Warblade. Wildcats. Death Blow. Uh, Team Seven, solo guy too as well. And the Japanese guy with the big red uh, Fuji from Stormwatch. There you go. <laughs> wow, I really did read them for years. Really? Yeah. Wolverine. Uh... This episode of iFanboy is brought to you by GoDaddy.com and Netflix.com. Hi, fanboy, the comic book discussion show. My name is Connor Kilpatrick, and I am here with Ron Richards, and I'm Josh Flanagan. I tried to jump the gun there. I know you're excited to get to the show. I am. Ooh, look weird. at all these books. There's a lot of comics here. Turns out there are all a, a crap ton of books from Wildstorm. Uh, Wildstorm, an imprint owned by DC Comics now, but it was originally part of the Image lineup. Yeah. Ron, you were around for that. I was. I was. So uh, <laughs> yeah. So back in 1992, when the Image founders defected from Marvel. Um, and also told DC they'd never work for them. Which was <laughs> hysterical. Yeah. Um, uh, one of those founders was Jim Lee, and uh, each of the Image founders, Rob Liefeld, Eric Larson, etc., uh, formed their own kind of imprint, and Jim Lee's imprint was called Wildstorm. Uh, while at the time, in 1992, it was part of the bigger Image universe, Jim Lee really, uh, Top Cow and, and Wildstorm were the two universes that got very defined very quickly with a lot of characters. Mm -hmm. um, Jim Lee's flagship title was Wildcats, which was Wild Covert Action, action Team, something like that. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't um, really make sense. It doesn't really yeah. read. Jim Lee had just coming off doing Uncanny X-Men a team book, so of course he develops I mean, he a team book. The I mean, he was the big. He was the big. Him He's and Tom McFarlane were the They were the biggest artists. names yeah. in the... Thing, exactly. Yeah. So with Brandon Troy, that's a name you haven't heard in, in 20 years, <laughs> um, he started writing, uh, they started doing Wildcats, which was a team book, featured seven characters, characters who are still kicking around today in the Wildstorm universe we're going to talk about, but you had uh, Zealot, the, the, girl, the, the girl in the red with the swords. Coda. You had, uh, Grifter, uh, the guy with the mask with Man, the black. I yeah. love the design yeah. from the neck up. Maul, <laughs> the big green purple guy. Warblade, was it Warblade? Yeah. yeah. Warblade, the guy with the claws. Of course, he's got he's, the claws. He's one of the dated designs. My favorite, Spartan, who was the leader. Mm -hmm. um, the he's a cyclops. Very, very cyclops. Yeah, it was a and, very, very and Psy like. wasn't there Wasn't Psylocke on the team? Um, oh no! It was someone who looked exactly like Silent. Yeah, it was. What was her name? Uh, was Voodoo. A, Voodoo. Yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of stripper. There's a lot of yeah. X-Men parallels in that team. Exactly. But essentially, what the team was is that it was a team on Earth who were actually fighting this this eons long uh, war between the races between the Caribbean and really good. the Demonites. And there are alien races. They settled on Earth and they were fighting on Earth. They had skirmishes, and that was really the seed that started the whole Wildstorm universe. Um, from that, they grew out. They, there was a bunch of spinoffs. Uh, Gen thirteen, yep. which was like the teen book, and that, that featured J. Scott Campbell. That, mm -hmm. that was his art for his, art in his first book. Um, Death Blow. Remember that was the the Vietnam vet who had cancer with the two red <laughs> the two red lines. I've never um, heard of that in my entire and life. Death Blow and some other people. There, there was, was a lot of Death Blow, Dark Claw, a lot yeah. of those kind of yeah. Take was, it one name, another dark word, and put it together. And in those mid nineties, they they really built up a history. There was a uh, this Team Seven. Um, which dated back years of superpower being. So it was a guy, Lynch, who was kind of like the pulling the strings, kind of like and Xavier, Nick Fury, he yeah. shows up. Um, Backlash was another character who I loved. He had this blue costume with this one white kind of thing over his eye, and he had this like um, tentacle that w whipped oh. out. Yeah, and so Mark Slayton was his, char his character name. I love that. Wow. Him. Yeah, no, I love I In the 90s, I, Wildstorm was one of my favorite lines of books. I mean, every book that came out from Wildstorm, I bought, yeah. um, including all the crossovers, all and the. I, you know, I can see that because the thing yeah. is, is actually, when you, if you read it now, there's a big backstory. Yeah. There's a big continuity. They created a big, deep universe. Yeah. They yes. did. And one of the titles that they built out of that was a title called Stormwatch. Which was again another team book, but this was UN sanctioned. They lived in a um, in a satellite outside of the Earth's atmosphere, <laughs> and it was international. They had characters. They had a Russian character, Winter. They had a, a Japanese character, Fuji, this big guy with the, with the containment suit. They had, a, um, they had the Irish character. The Irish character, if I name, name I can't remember. Uh, the leader was Jackson King, and and Storm, the Weatherman. The, yeah, the weather, Bendix. Yeah, yeah, which I thought was funny because Bendix came along. Bendix. Bendix. Well, Bendix. that starts but, the whole they're thing. They're both bald. Of, yeah, the, yeah, the Weatherman, and then that gets taken over in the next part we're going to talk about. Yeah, but so. So um, Stormwatch really was the was the um, kind of later 90s. That was the book that got the most kind of attention. Wildcats kind of waned. Um, and in the late 90s, actually, what the, we made the DC joke earlier, um, Jim Lee ended up selling his studio to DC Comics. And so Wildstorm left Image and got absorbed by DC Comics as an imprint. Um, nothing really changed um, in terms of what they were doing. It's not like they forced them into the DC universe or, yet. Or anything like that. <laughs> um, um, they just kind of they DC owned them, and they just they just kept on put, putting out books. Um, and Stormwatch was the was kind of a 
uh, a hit in the late '90s because it was really kind of one of the first platforms for Warren Ellis. Yeah. yeah. Um, he did. A, he took that title in the mid '30s, I think, and started doing um, yeah, "Change yeah. or Die." Was the was yeah. the was the big storyline in there? Um, it, it ended up into this big sort of uh, finale that that oddly enough ended with like an aliens crossover or something like that. Did it became, it really? yeah, yeah, and it became completely impossible to find the end of the story that happened in this one issue oh, that was that, very yeah. strange. I remember I zoned out at that point. Right well, when it got good. Anyways, <laughs> that 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 led into what became the Authority. Yeah, that's the time period where. It really took off mm -hmm. for the modern age, modern reader. Yeah. I think you yes. find a lot of people now who are very, very fiercely loyal to Wildstorm, who came came around in that era mm -hmm. yeah. of when the Warren Ellis era, where he was writing a couple of the books, and it was sort of they were all very popular yeah. or very talked about. And, and it, what it was was that it was it was it was leading up to the Authority, and that it was laying the groundwork, and there was a bit of this buzz. And I remember the whole kind of like, are you like we talked about, like, are you reading Stormwatch? Like, yeah. Yeah. something's going on over there. Yeah. Um, and then towards the end of the decade, towards the end of the late nineties, early two thousands, that's when the Authority came along. And to say the Authority changed everything is a bit of an understatement. I think the Authority is probably one of the most important books of this decade. Yeah, as far as Influ superhero influence. Comics, yeah. yeah, influence. Yeah. And and it was the direct message of the book. The book yeah. itself was the Authority, where this team of Really, really, really powerful characters: the the Midnighter and Apollo. There was the Superman, and the Batman uh, yep. versions. The Engineer. Yep. The well, Doctor. Awesome. Yep. The doc. Jack Hawksmore, who's a weird character, but and it's cool. hard to explain. But like, the more you get into it, the more you read it, the more awesome he is. Yep. Uh, Swift. Swift, who seems not as powerful as the other ones, but then she is in, in her way. It was just all these things that happened, and they basically Led came by. along and said. And then Jenny Sparks. Jenny, Jenny Sparks. Sparks, right? Yeah. And and they basically said, "Okay, world, we're here." We're taking over, making sure everything's okay. We're in charge now, yeah. and it was, but not in a dict to dictatorial way. It was kind of like it was, it was. No, but not. It's a benign dic dictatorship. Sure. Yeah. They, they didn't. They only imposed their will they when they thought something was wrong. Exactly. I mean, like if you look at the superhero kind of approach, which is like you know Superman with in, in the DC universe is called this great power. But it always is a little at arm's length. He's just there to make sure everything stays okay. The authority was like, no, we're going to change things. We don't like what you're doing. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna fix it. And they killed people. And yes. go governments. Very and, proactive. They're going yeah. to topple governments that yeah. they thought were evil. They're going to yeah. be proactive in and their... Like, led what, by Jenny Sparks. And one of the awesome. things that I really loved about Pretty it was sure. that it... it um, it was very, like, all the characters were interesting in ways that, that they hadn't been before. And there was a lot of huge ideas. The carrier, which was powered by a pocket universe. It's it, their, their big ship that they yeah. traveled in. It traveled in an area called the Bleed, yeah. which is, like, in between dimensions. Yeah. And, and, they, and could, they had these doors that they can cross in and out of. And the thing that people focus on more than anything, probably, when they think about the Authority, mm -hmm. uh, is uh, Midnighter and Apollo, yep. who were the Batman and Superman, uh, and they are a couple, still are, to this day. Yep. Uh, and the thing that I love about those characters, the thing that I think makes this book stand out to me, and the, the groundbreaking thing is, was they're one of the most mature relationships in comics, and certainly the most mature gay relationship in comics. Yeah. They just said there was no punchline to their relationship. There was no jokes about. I mean, there was some, but it was it, it wasn't in any way uh, derogatory. And they mm -hmm. just said, this is the fact. This is what they are. These guys are a character. But there was also nobody in the entire universe who could beat either of them. Yeah. Yeah. They were the apex of power in that Midnighter's world. Midnighter's whole thing is that he, he, he looks at the angles of every kind of fight mm -hmm. and knows like a hundred different ways to kill you. Yeah, and, he has enhancements. Right, and Apollo is, is powered by the sun. Yeah, He's sun the sun god. god. Yeah, so, um, and they actually, all of the characters became a god in a way. Like Hawksmoor is the god of cities. Yeah. And the, the, the doctor is the, the sort of the nature god. And the engineer yeah. is the god of technology. So, yeah. We Switch should mention also that the, the, the art was by Brian Hitch. Yeah, well, I was going to get into that. So Warren Ellis teamed up with Brian Hitch on this, and Hitch was doing Stormwatch, and what they did was they ended Stormwatch and then launched the authority out of Stormwatch. And it really, from a from a creator standpoint, from a book standpoint, they defined the term, which you know, 10 years ago we rolled our eyes at after hearing it over and over again, haven't heard it in a while, but they defined the idea of widescreen comics in that you open this two-page spread, and Brian Hitch would draw this amazingly detailed, action-packed, just g jumped out and grab at you, and and it was you know they're both you know British creators, and and mm -hmm. they've been working in the British comic scene and you know honing their craft, and then to the American you know to the mainstream kind of comic scene, which just blew their minds. It was just yeah. like, oh my god, and, we've seen this. You know? And I'd still say you know I think it's the best work Hitch has ever done. Yeah. It's my yeah. favorite thing he's ever done. It's the best superhero work that Warren Ellis has ever done. Yeah. I'll give it that. Yeah, yeah. What, what I think is interesting is that it bucked the, the trends and it led, the, it, led, it led the other future Wildstorm books to buck the trends of what was going on in superhero comics. So you had the authority with this widescreen kind of proactive approach. Then you had Joe Casey and Sean Phillips on Wildcats, right. which was uh, taking that team that we all knew 
and changing the power, like changing they, the, the they, concept. They're a corporate. They're yeah. a corporation. Prior yeah. to that, there had been some pretty legendary runs. Uh, yeah. James Robbins did a long run, and Alan, Alan Moore did a long run. Yeah. And Casey came along, and he took stuff from both of those into this new paradigm. Oh. And these these are my, uh, along with the authority, but my first, but into the Wildcats proper. These are my first experience with it, yeah. and it blew me away because they they made instead of. Um, Instead of uh, Spartan being the head of the the warrior head of the the Wildcats, he yeah. became the CEO of the Halo Corporation, yep. and he'd been taking on the Jack Marlowe was his uh, his Lord I, Imp, yeah. the short caribou guy, and basically ran Wildcats like a co corporation. Yes, and they made products, and and all the while Grifter was there. And again, you know, and the, the concept of story transitioned to the creative team. You had Sean Phillips, whose art style wasn't really like anything we saw at the no. time. It was very challenging. Um, and it, it was so good it got canceled. Um, well, it was very, tragic, it was yeah. very ahead of its time. Very ahead of its time. But, yeah. then, but then that cleared up Sean Phillips to work on Sleeper, mm -hmm. which is one of our favorite books. Ed Brubaker writing Sleeper, much more... How would you describe Sleeper? I mean, it's still in the Wildstorm universe. It's a superhero book. It but is. And again, it took a lot from yeah. Alan Moore's Wildcats because Tao yeah. was from that, that line. Yeah. Tao became the sort of villain character. And Lynch, who you mentioned earlier, becomes yeah. the, the good guy. But that's... It's superhero crime noir. Superhero crime yes. noir, espionage, spy stuff, you know, thriller. double agent, thriller, yeah. And it's, Sleeper stands on its own. You don't yeah. need to read no. any Wildstorm. You could pick up those Sleeper books. I, when I read Sleeper, I had yeah. no idea that it was yeah. part of a larger continuity. It was only later that I learned that. So You yeah. don't need to at all. Nope. It's yeah. totally... Yeah. totally yeah. So I mean, he also had Planetary and, and Warren else doing deconstructed comics. So right. he the, he really had his imprint on superhero comics in the early 2000s. We do have to right. mention Planetary. You do. Yeah, and it, do. Yeah, it, 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 ended, it, and you'll be able to get an But it totally story. affected other books, too. That whole yeah. deconstructed style was, was influential on a lot, of, a lot of books. After Wildstorm got bought by DC, that early 2000s was a really kind of challenge, taking challenges, taking risks, and they did some great comics. Um, they also uh, started doing some creator on books, and after the break, we'll tell you about some of those. Just take a moment and imagine a world without Netflix. <sighs> Thanks to Netflix for sponsoring this episode of iFanboy. With Netflix, you can rent over 90,000 titles online, including lots and lots of Blu-ray titles with free shipping both ways to your home. They now have over 40 shipping centers, so almost all deliveries happen in just one business day. Netflix plans start from $4.99. As a new member, you can get a no-risk two-week free trial membership. Check it out at www.netflix.com slash iFanboy. And remember the www because it won't work without it. In addition to, you know, kind of challenging superhero books, they started doing creator-owned books. And they had kind of tinkered with it in the late 90s when Jim Lee launched the Homage line of comics. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, for a short while, Strangers in Paradise was published by... Yeah. Astro City. Leave, well, not to get that. Really? Leave, Leave It to Chance with James Robinson. Yeah. But those were short-lived. The only one that survived that Homage comics period was Kurt Busiek and Brent Anderson and Alex Ross's Astro City, which is still being published today, which is a Wildstorm imprint book. Mm -hmm. Completely creator-owned, completely its own universe. And that kind of laid the groundwork for other great creator-owned books. That which earth is that on? We I don't did, think they've defined. We it. did a whole show on that. We probably yeah. said no it because that one. The, the Wildstorm is now a DC Earth. It is, yeah, but I don't think the creator and stuff. I hope <laughs> it's not. Anyway, but um, Earth Fifty Eight, Astro City. <laughs> but so uh, that kind of that kind of blazed the, the trail, and it's funny because right before Wildstorm got bought by DC, there was a huge coup. <laughs> they signed on one of the greatest comic writers ever. Yeah, they got Alan Moore to do a whole line of books, and they were all great. This 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 is an early two thousand period yeah. where there was just late 90s, so many late nineties yeah. early two thousand period where there was so many great books coming out from Wildstorm, and you had Top Ten, and you had Tom Strong, and you had Promethea, and you had all these books. They were America's best comics. And the imprint of Tom. He of, of he was Tom very Moore. anti DC, very anti Marvel, so he, he signs on with Jim Lee, and then Jim Lee proceeds to sell his company to DC. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward phone call. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they they went with it for a while, but it yeah. fell apart. They, well, they they. they he Some great books came out of it. He convinced yeah. them there was a firewall between, between Alan Moore and DC. He'd never deal with them. And there was. Until yeah. the Marvel douche thing. But yeah. that's a different story. But um, <laughs> so, so you've got, in Wildstorm, you've got these superhero books. You've got Astro City. You've got America's Best Comics. Um, but then one of our favorite comics of the decades came along. Um, uh, Ex Machina by Brian K. Vaughn and Tony uh, Harris. A yeah. lot of people talk about why The Last Man is being, um, you know, Brian K. Vaughn's greatest work, but Ex Machina is right behind it. Yep. Um, Ex Machina, if you don't know, is the story of Mitchell Hundred, who is, he was imbued with strange alien powers to be able to talk to technology, uh, and using that, he saved one of the towers uh, in the World Trade Center attack, and he became mayor of New York, and the book Great sort of cliffhanger on the first issue. The very first issue, like, you get to that last page, and I... I so Brian K. Vaughn, first issue. I yeah. called you, you did, and I was yeah. like, did yeah. you read that yeah. issue? Because yeah. it, nobody had talked about it yet. Right, it was, it it was, was almost a, too soon. It was, was it a pick almost. of the week? I think it was. It might have been. Yeah. I think it was yours. Um, yeah, he does those great first issues, you know, the yeah. Why the Last Man, this one, the, uh, the Logan one. Anyway, 
This this was uh, and it's it, this is like an epics. This is one of their more epics. Yes, yeah. they're, they're in the sixties or no forties. Going to end it at issue fifty. It's almost done, yeah. um, and it, it's it's really it's, it's it's a political book that that tiptoes between the raindrops a little bit because it never takes a side. And Brian Vaughn's always been careful to say this isn't me. This isn't my politics that I'm putting in this book. He's got Mitchell Hundred, and what Mitchell, what Hundred is, is this. You couldn't call him liberal or conservative or anything. He's just he's sort of doing unique. his own thing, and it's it's a bit of a dream politician situation. Well, did, so did we mention he's the mayor of New York? Well, yeah, he's the yeah. mayor of New York City, yeah. and but he how he got to that notoriety is from when he his stint as a superhero, the Great um, Machine. The Great Machine. He had this ability to control machines, and so he decides he's going to help people, and he saves the World Trade Center. It's kind of not a great superhero. Not a very good superhero, yeah. well, he, and, he, and he realizes that he can ha save people by actually working working the system. Yeah. And so a, he runs for mayor and wins. wins it's yeah. a superhero that exists in the real world, so he oh. comes out of the costume from. Stuff and looks, looks like a lot idiot. more like you would do if, if you were like, I gotta make a costume, and you went yeah. into your closet and you were like, here, and looks a bike like helmet, and a... yeah. so. But um, <laughs> no, it's been great. Tony Harris's art is beautiful in it, and it's just the example of what when a publisher can give two great creators a platform to just do good work and, and, and not and, worry about you know continuity or not worry you know, and create do one their own long story yeah, yeah. line. You know that, that there's gonna you know at the end there'll be a set of trades or a couple of hardcovers or something like that. You know, and, and you'll be able to read those as one big story, like a like a novel almost. Yeah. So, um, in addition to Ex Machina, they've been following this model, and they've done other great books, like The Winter Men. The Winter Men, was, in, this in was trade. a couple years ago, and they yeah. finally released, released the trade, and it's yeah. great. Um, <laughs> it is great. John Paul Leone's art is yeah, fantastic. Yeah, John Paul Leone, I love him. Um, Storming Paradise, Chuck Stixon's alternate uh, World War II story. Yeah. Um, some really some editor at Wildstorm likes war stories. Yeah. <laughs> um, some recent book, some recent creator on stuff. Uh, Red Herring is a mini series that's been Philip Bond yep. uh, has been doing the art on. That's yeah, been sort of. issues. It's been, yeah, sort of. <laughs> uh, but most recently, one of the one of our favorite creator on books uh, from Wildstorm has been Mysterious the Unfathomable. Mysterious the Unfathomable by uh, Did I get that right? Yeah, anyway, uh, it sounded like I bubbled. Uh, Jeff Parker and Tom Fowler are doing this book about it's. It's not like anything else. It's basically. A magician who is mysterious, who's been around for a very long time and is is extended his life, is a master of the, of the magical arts. Not unlike a John Constantine, but he's decided that to get through now, he has to hire himself out. Um, to, stage to, magic. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, he, he he's he acts like a stage magician, but he actually is magic. And part of the thing in this book is that if you, uh, a lot of the guys who are stage magicians are actual magicians, but they just hide their real magicianship by doing, uh, you know, the. The guy who, the, who's the guy? Doug Hennig. Who? David Copperfield. Yeah, these kind of people. Who's David the guy? Blaine. Him. David, yeah, David there's, Blaine. There's like yeah. a David Blaine character in yeah. here. Tom Fowler's art is very um, uh, Don Hall, I think, Mad, Mad Magazine style. I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. There's like, yeah. you know, Mysterious has a big bulbous yeah. nose and he's, yeah. he's fat around the middle. It's funny. I think it's the bad rap that Wildstorm gets. Is that If these books were Vertigo books, it'd be much bigger. Totally. That, and we always say, laugh that Ex Machina is a Vertigo book. Yeah, um, should it's be, you know, yeah, but it's just it's just yeah. the bad rap that the, the yeah. imprint gets. If if Mysterious was coming out or Ex Machina or Winterman came out from Vertigo, you'd be hearing a lot more about these books yeah. than you do. Mysterious Enough Alvel is coming out in trade um, in February. In February or, or it's probably could be yeah, out by now. I forget the exact release date, but um, uh, definitely pick it up. It's that it's one of those hidden gems of 2009. It really, I am not, I I haven't really gravitated toward Jeff Barker's uh, superhero work um, yeah. because that, for me personally, the tone doesn't jive with me but in this book it's yep. allowed to be its own thing and it goes all over the place like one of the ideas in is that there's this Dr. Seuss character and all of the rhymes in it are actually magical chants and yep. by having people all over the world every night chant these things out loud to their kids yep. it, gives uh, power. it gives him power and it opens up like pathways for Dean and it's like, just silly but it's sillier than that that but sounds like what Grant clever. Morrison does in his books yeah yeah it's really but clever. But he's really doing it. And, but Mysterious, <laughs> Mysterious is actually a really fun character, and he's got yeah. an assistant. And Delphi is, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just a great relationship. And I don't know, it's a fun book. If you want to take a risk and try something different, Mysterious is definitely one you should check it's out. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. So, um, but they still do the superhero books, the Wildcats and all stuff like that. A little rocky, a rocky road over the past couple of years. Uh, but when we get back from the next break, we'll take a look at them. Thank you to GoDaddy for sponsoring this episode of iFanboy. Web hosting from GoDaddy.com includes 99.9% .9 uptime, 24-7 support, and free access to hosting connection. The place to install over 30 free applications sure to help you get the most from your hosting plan and website. Use the code FAN14 to get any .net, .biz, or .org domain name for only $7.49. And pay attention to this. You could win $25,000 by going to my.biz and entering to win. One lucky Revision 3 winner will win $25,000. The contest ends soon, so go to my.biz now to enter. A few years back, 
they they said we have to look at the Wildstorm universe proper. All the Wildcats <laughs> have already stopped. It had gone downhill after that. We were the, all the two yeah, exactly. And and they they tried a couple of things. So this is like I said, it's a rocky road. So bear with us. We're gonna we're gonna try to hit the main points and then talk about like where we're at now. But so in around 2006 or so, they did a series, a crossover with DC called Captain Adam Armageddon, yeah. which at the time I loved. I think that was earlier. So I think it's 2005. 2005. Was it around the time of 52. Captain Adam from the DC universe. Something happened and he woke up in the Wildstorm universe yeah. and he wasn't supposed to be there. And he went around the Wildstorm universe, got in a fight, trying to figure it out. Turns out he's a ticking time bomb. And at the end of it, it blew up the Wildstorm universe. Armageddon happened yeah. and it was basically served as their crisis moment uh, yeah. to reboot the universe okay great the series started off really strong and it really kind of weak yeah it did but now you got a blank slate okay then Wildstorm comes out guns blazing with Worldstorm and this is their cross the line reboot Weird. and they've got some a-list talent. Big name. Okay, so you got Wildcats launching with Grant Morrison and Jim Lee. That's as big a book as I could possibly pitch to. exactly they got um, The Authority come out with Grant Morrison and Gene Ha Wow. Yeah, exactly. They had uh, all their other titles. With Sign other me games. up. They, they launched new <laughs> titles, like Stormwatch PhD came out, and that featured Christos Gage doing... No, 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 not until later. No, that was part of the, that. Was part of that no, but he, he wasn't the writer until later. No, he started the book. No, he didn't. Micah Ian Wright did, and then he got kicked off because oh, he was a fake. Right. He was I a forgot fake, about that. He was a fake soldier. Yeah, yeah well, anyway, so, but, so Stormwatch PhD, um, Gail Simone launched Boom. Welcome, Welcome to Tranquility, which is a superhero kind of retirement community. So a little bit of the classic stuff, a little bit of, the, of new kind of new blood... Um, didn't go well. Well, because well, they didn't come out. That would be why. Grant Morrison, Jim Lee, Wildcats, one issue. Yeah. Uh, Grant Morrison, Gene Ha, Authority, two issues. <laughs> um, faltered and we, delays. We spent pretty much all of 2007 waiting for the next issues mm -hmm. to come out. I remember I excitedly bought both. Yeah. I was excited yeah. for this return and then nothing. Not so good. So they decide to do it again. <laughs> and at this point is when they lost me. Because I wasn't, I was like, oh, I'm, fool me once, that yeah. kind of thing. Absolutely, yeah. I think a lot of people did that. And it turns, here, here it is, this is what I'm telling you, turns out that may have been a bit hesitant, may, may have been a bit of a mistake on my part. Yeah. The World's End event gets triggered around 2008 or so, uh, 2007, 2008? year and a half, yeah. two years ago. year and a half, two years ago. And basically it was the same kind of premise, which was we're going to end the world. But as opposed to doing an Armageddon event, start from scratch, they ended the world and continued in that, in okay. that world. Okay, yeah, there's, so. a, there's a Wildstorm Armageddon you can read. It's going to go through the whole thing. But basically, if you start with any of the World's End books, they all, all the main titles of the series have them. Authority has a World's End trade, Wildcats, World's End, Gen 13, Stormwatch yeah. PhD, all those things. Uh, uh, and they're going to explain what happened. Basically, the world ending, like, here's your spoiler, so deal with it. Um, some missile silos opened up. A bunch of uh, super-powered humans came out. They'd been gone mad. Uh, they destroyed the heck out of the world, and then World's End starts. Where are they from there? Yeah. Wildcats are in Los Angeles. The Authority carrier is crashed in and fused with London. Yeah. Um, and there's stuff going on in the other books. We're just focused fused on with London. Yes. Fused, yeah. It's it's the yes. realities of crossed over. Ooh. Um, oh. On Wildcats, you've got Christos Gage, and I forget who the, the artist Gooch. is. Gooch. 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 Uh, and there, you know. If, if, if you're like me and you'd only read sort of bits of Wildcats here and there, I was still able to follow. It was really easy to get up to the speed of things. Well, if it's a good reboot, on. then you're going to write it in a way that you, you, have, don't you don't have to. Yeah, exactly. You can jump on with these World End yeah. books and not have to worry yeah. about any of the Armageddon. And one here. of the things that you learn about the Wildcats is that those characters are really good characters. They've they been are good around characters. for a long time. There's all these really interesting... Uh, you know, differences, there's romance, there's soap opera stuff going on between them, there's all of this history, but it's all covered in this book. If you've never read it before, you can read it. You get it. And I started reading and go, wow, I really like the Wildcats. I forget. And mm -hmm. there's that history. You can go back and there's read any There's something about them that I, I, there's a reason why I kept yeah. on coming back and I've been away for a while, but now I'm getting pulled back in. Like, and Grifter is basically a Wolverine character. But with guns. Yeah. Like, yeah but it, and yeah. it's okay, though. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's fine. Uh, you go over to the Authority and I, for myself, I had written off the Authority. You know, Grifter's kind of a Hawkeye-ish character. Yeah, a he little is, bit. Actually, yeah. 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 He's a little more badass. He's yeah. a little more Yeah, but um, he's got that kind of vibe to him. Go yeah. ahead. Uh, you, he's really good with guns. Yeah. Uh, you go over to the Authority and I had not read the Authority since uh, Miller and, and Ellis, basically, because I thought... You didn't read the Miller, well, the Miller Quietly stuff? I did. Yeah, after, after Warren Ellis and Brian Hitch ended their run of The Authority, Mark Miller and Frank, Frank Quietly did a run on that as well in the early 2000s. That was just as good and big. And so I've been hearing that yeah. Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning, who were over in Marvel's Cosmic Universe kicking butt, are doing The Authority, and I think, well, I should check that out, but I didn't. Right. Okay? Me neither. There it is. I didn't. 
I'm I'm as big of an Abnet and Landing fan as you can get, and mm-hmm. I didn't even know they were doing it. Right. Like I had literally completely ignored the entire line. Yeah. What a mistake. <laughs> yeah. What a mistake. This Authority World's End is so good. Like I I read it all in one sitting. It was so it picks up London is trash. Too. London is trashed and the authority as opposed to and they are all lamenting that we didn't we didn't stop this. We yeah, they were supposed know. to. We were the authority and exactly. we have no authority and at all. So now they're doing it. They're just protecting people. They're bringing in refugees, bringing them into the carrier and they're trying to figure out how to get technology to work again. And it's a very post-apocalyptic The sun is blotted out. So Apollo is the most powerful member he can't, can't join them because he yeah. runs out of power as soon as he comes into the atmosphere. Now, of course, Apollo and Midnight are at a couple. They are they're they're heartbroken because they can't see each other. And they there's all these other. touching scenes yeah. where like they get to see each other for a couple of minutes at a time. Yeah. And, and Jack Hawksmore. The cities are in ruins, so Haw- Hawksmore is is in a wheelchair. Mm-hmm. You know, because he's connected to the cities. It just it taps into each one. The the engineer no longer her her powers don't work. She's just yeah. normal. Um, it taps into what makes each one of the characters. Like, I didn't think, after the authority, after that one main idea, I didn't think you could do it again. That's why I never went back to it. And they were able to spin it just They're a little characters. to make it interesting They're good again. characters. Yeah. That, was, that um, was the thing. One of Abnett, the, I'm sorry, Abnett and Lanning are, are British writers as well, and this feels a lot like a 2000 AD book. If you've heard about 2000 AD, that's the kind of anthology science fiction uh, title that's been going for years and years and years over in England. I see. Um, I, this has got that feel to it. It does, but it also has really good mainstream superhero comics sure. feel. Yeah. And, and the way that I was kind of like, wow, this is as good as anything that's being done in Marvel yep. or, or most of the DC stuff. Like it really is. It's just that people don't tend to relate to the characters as much. It is a little more mature than that stuff because the characters are built in that way. Yeah. Um, the art in this is great. Th- well, that, th- this artist, Simon Colby, who I'd never heard of, I was reading through this and and really, really excellent in the vein of Brian Hitch. Yep. Um, really dark, exactly. More shadowy, shadowy, it. heavy. Yeah. It's so, great so, pages. so good. Um, and, cur- and, and it continues currently right now in Wildcats. They got a new creative team with Adam Beechin, who we, who mm-hmm. we like, and yep. um, Tim Seeley from Hack Slash fame. Yep. Yep. Um, like, there's some good stuff going on in Wildstorm, and we totally, you know, blew it. All. Totally blew it. Totally blew it. Well, the thing is, we read a lot of comics, and there's just so <laughs> many. You can't read all can't of read, them. But now I'm reading at least Wildcats and the Authority again. So mm-hmm. Definitely um, worth it. So yeah. it's, it's a un- and, and, and that goes back about a year and a half. So if yeah. you go back, those first trades, are out you can check those out if that's something it's a lot of comics here if yeah. for example you've been re- you miss those with the old authority comics or you you're just feeling like superheroes but you want a little bit of a change it's a really good thing to check out because it's superhero comics but it, it's just a little different and also if if it's happening in landing it's just as good as the other stuff but there's a different tone to it than their marvel it's not work. not as a fun loving tone yes. as in the as in gardens of the galaxy or nova or marvel a little more serious a little more darker but still, it's just stellar. Just so good. Mm-hmm. I'm so, seeing some big names in the back. There's Chris Sprouse, yeah. Ivan Reese. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, Ivan Reese did a backup story. Ben Oliver. Yeah. Uh, there's the Morrison, Giffen, Derek Robertson. That's the last finishing year. His, his the finishing the authority run he finally did. Yeah, but there's some big people on these books. Definitely. Yeah. So, um, so go to ifanboy.com. There'll be a post about this episode with links to all these books. You can pick up the trade paperbacks and check them out there, as well as tell everybody what you thought of this episode. You can also send an email at contact at ifanboy.com or call our voicemail line, which is 888-FANBOYS-326-2697. Ask any kind of questions you want. Yep. They don't have to be authority or Wildstorm related. Yeah. And you can check out all of our previous episodes at revision3.com slash ifanboy. So, wow. Wildstorm. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> you scripted that one? No, really, I read them all. I can name anybody. Uh, which blade? <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> Too soon. <laughs> Start again. Three, <laughs> two. No, really, I read them all. I can name anyone. Okay, the, give him one. The doctor. the doctor. Oh, the authority. Yeah. yeah. Let's do it again. Yeah. Three, <laughs> two. <laughs>